Hi, and welcome to today's episode, which is all about exploring ways of using Tempe. When I look in the analytics section on my YouTube studio, the Tempe video that I did is always second from the top. The top one's usually that week's video. So I've been thinking, well, I need to do more Tempe content, clearly. Then I was looking through the freezer the other day, trying to clear bits and pieces out, and I found some pastry that was left over. So I thought, perhaps I'll make a kind of tart and use tempeh to top it, like crumbled tempeh to pop on the top of it. I've got a sneaky suspicion <laughs> this is the leftover pastry from the chocolate sweet potato and chestnut tart instead of the seeded pastry from the za'atar tart that I did ages ago. So this is a little bit sweet, <laughs> which is going to be a bit weird. But I'm going to do like a mushroom filling that's going to be quite umami. So I think it should balance out quite nicely. Because I've only got a small amount of the pastry, I'm going to use little tart cases. So these are little kind of individual tarts. You can definitely just scale this recipe up if you want to make a bigger one. You could either make your own pastry or just buy a roll. You know, the, the pre-made stuff you can get in supermarkets. Absolutely fine. But I thought I'd give you the idea and then you can do things yourself. So the first step, I'm going to roll the pastry out, fill the cases and then put them in the fridge because they need to chill back down before going in the oven. Then I'll start putting pieces in and because it's quite a little tart I'm gonna get it as thin as I can and then start going up the sides a bit. Problem with building it in the tin is it just makes it a bit more difficult to see how thick it is especially in the corners here but I think that is quite thick so I'm just gonna get my finger in and mush it down as far as I can. So I'm just gonna go over the top now with a sharp knife and just cut the excess away. That will also give me an idea if I've got any really thick parts. I've got my little tart case there. It's all fairly even. So now I'm just going to prick the bottom with a fork and that's going to stop it puffing up too much. Just let some of the steam escape. So it looks a bit like a digestive biscuit. <laughs> so I'm going to pop that in the fridge. I managed to get three of the cases. So they're just in the fridge chilling and then they'll go in the oven. Probably chill them for about 20 minutes, half an hour onto the tempeh. Now, if you haven't come across it before, this one I bought from the shop and it's made from soybeans. I'm not sure how else to describe it other than a cake, <laughs> kind of, it's a solid block. Made it before, I'll stick a link in the description. Whichever bean or whichever pulse that you use, the principle's the same. You kind of cook the beans and then you add a tempeh starter. And if I've remembered from doing that video, it's Rhizopus oligosporus. It's mold. It grows around the beans and then the mycelium. Mycelium it grows around the beans and forms like a really tight network. I mean, it sounds horrible, but it's delicious. It's a very nutty, mild kind of flavor. The texture reminds me a bit of, a bit like halloumi cheese without the squeakiness. If you don't want to go to the trouble of making it, you can just buy it from the supermarket, keep an eye out. I use Plant Power brand. And if you're in the UK, uh, Tofu, who make the big blocks of tofu, they've started doing tempeh as well. Or check like a local health food store, that kind of thing. So that's the texture of it. So you can kind of vaguely see the outline of the beans and then everything that surrounds it is the risoppus mold. So I think I'll break off a chunk and then try and crumble that a little bit. See how it breaks down. Yeah, okay, I think that will work. So I'm just going to kind of tear off little crumbles of it. I'm going to add in barbecue sauce and ketchup just to give a bit of extra flavour. And also it might go a little bit chewy on the outside, which is going to be really nice. So I'll start with half a tablespoon of ketchup and the same barbecue. And then I can always add a bit more because I don't want it flooded. I just want to kind of hold everything together. I'll do a touch more of each and then we're there. And then I'll cover this and put it to the side ready for when we need it. I'm going to bake the tarts in the air fryer. What we need to do first is blind bake the shell, otherwise it goes very soggy if you put anything mildly damp inside there. I'm going to preheat the air fryer to 180 and bake the cases at 180. If you're using an oven, do 200 for fan or 220 for non-fan. For blind baking, we need to put something on the bottom to stop it puffing up so it kind of compresses everything. You can buy like special baking beans, but I just use dry pulses and grains. So I've got lentils, mung beans, uh, I think there's pearl barley in there, that kind of thing. You could use rice, just anything heavy enough to weigh it down. Got three little squares of baking parchment. I'm just going to scrunch them up and scrunching it helps you get into the corners of the tart case. Unravel it and then scrunch it again. So I'm going to put the paper in. To get it into the corners, just put one finger in and kind of pull the top back and that'll help shape it into there. Now fill that with beans. Pack it down a bit just to make sure it's into the corners. Do the same for the other two. So I've got the three little tart cases in the air fryer. I think I'll put them on for 10 minutes and then have a look, see how it's looking. I've got 300 grams of chestnut mushrooms. 
I've given them a light wipe with paper towels just to get any mud off. So I'm gonna grate these in the food processor just for speed, but you can do them by hand as well. For the filling, I'm just gonna chop up one celery stick, a carrot, and two little spring onions. Fry them off in some sunflower oil. So I'm just gonna split this down the middle. It's a bit of a wonky shape, so it's tricky to do it evenly, but it's fine. And then split that in half. I may well have more filling than I need, but that's fine because I can just have it as a kind of pate. So I'll just finely dice these. I'll split the celery into three, leaving that end attached, just to make it a bit easier to hold on to. I'll put the carrots and celery into the pan and they can start cooking because the spring onion will take a bit less time. Give everything a toss just to get everything coated in oil. Let's have a look at the tart case. Okay, so I'm just going to lift the paper back. Hmm. It's catching much faster there than I'd like. It still needs a little bit longer on the bottom. You want it to have a bit more of a crust on there. I'm going to cover the rings with a bit of foil just so they don't kind of bake anymore. Let's do the same with the other two as well. And then I'll put the beans in and do another five minutes, I think. Back to the veggies. I'm just going to fine dice the spring onions. I'm going to cut the really dark green part just because it can be quite tough and fibrous. And just dice those down. I'll just let these keep on frying for another couple of minutes. I'm going to add some salt into here. That's going to help pull some moisture out of the veggies and then they'll brown a bit faster. And also for a bit of seasoning as well. You check the cases real quick. Maybe another five because it's starting to kind of dry out on the sides there in the middle it's still a little bit wet I'm just going to check to see if that's okay yeah I think that's protecting it quite well so another five and then I'll just leave them in the air fryer once the veggies are all sweated down they go kind of a little bit softened that's what we're going to start adding in the mushrooms so I think we're about there you're looking for kind of little golden bits in places add the mushrooms in stir those into the rest of the mixture Keep cooking this down until the mushrooms have released all of the liquid. Probably going to take 10 minutes or so. So you can see quite quickly lots of liquid starts coming out of it. And you want to get rid of all of that. If you want to save time, you can pour the liquid away. But I like cooking it back into it because you just get more depth of flavour. So I'm going to add a bit more seasoning into here, a bit more flavour. Lots of black pepper. And then I'm just going to add some mixed herbs. That's just you generic <laughs> ones that you get from the shop. So I'll do like... I don't know, half a teaspoon and some garlic powder. Maybe a quarter teaspoon, probably more like half a teaspoon. Doing the cases for another five because there's a very small little spot of kind of moist pastry in the middle. So just to get it that toasted off a bit. I'm going to add in a touch of MSG to the mushrooms just to give an extra umami kick. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Just keep tweaking the seasonings till it tastes how you want it. I've got 40 grams of walnut pieces there that I've toasted. It's maybe just over a third of a cup, something like that. Doesn't need to be exact. Um, I just toasted them in the air fryer, 180 for about seven minutes, something like that. Just keep shaking them every couple of minutes and they go a little bit brown on top, more brown. Uh, it's just to kind of boost the flavor up a bit. Still producing a lot of steam, so that's a sign there's still quite a fair amount of liquid in the mushrooms. Just want to keep taking that down, but we need to make sure it's not scorching anywhere. Have the walnuts in, give them a good stir. I'm going to use a little drop of soy sauce, maybe a quarter teaspoon. I didn't want too much soy sauce, just a little bit, just to kind of deepen the flavour a bit. I've got some fresh basil leaves there, I'm just going to tear that into it. You can cut it, but it just goes a bit not so pleasant when you slice it for some reason. I'm not 100% sure why. You can use any fresh herbs that you like, but do the fresh herbs at the end, otherwise the flavour, yeah, it's not quite as zingy. And I'll just fold those through. The cases are all baked and the mixture's done, so it's time to start building the little tarts. I took the beans out of the cases and then just put them in there for eight minutes at 150, just to get them completely dry on the top. They are darker than I'd like them to be, so I would go maybe 160 if you're doing it in the air fryer. I assume it's because I've air fried them that they've gone as dark as they have. I'm gonna pack the mushroom mixture into the cases and then put like a little dome of the tempeh on the top of it. I'm just gonna double check that these little things have worked, which they have. So it just makes it a bit easier to lift out later. These are non-stick tins. So if yours aren't non-stick, I'd recommend greasing them or lining it the whole thing with baking paper because otherwise they're gonna get wedged in there. So I'll add the mixture in. So I'm just trying to get it in there as tightly as possible. 
The cases are filled with the mushroom mixture and then that's how much I've got left in the pan. So it's not as much as I thought it might be actually. So now I'm just going to kind of pile the tempeh on top of that. Just giving the tempeh a little mix through just to make sure everything's still nice and evenly coated. I'm going to fill all three and then I won't run out of anything. <laughs> Using the back of the spatula just to sort of push it down and drag it from the centre to the sides. I've got all three of them filled. So I'm just going to tuck those into the air fryer. If the pastry wasn't as dark as it is, I'd go maybe 160, 170, but because it's darkened more than I wanted it, I think I'll do 150 for 10 minutes. And I'm gonna look at it halfway through and maybe put the foil rings back on the side if it looks like it's getting too dark. Tart's all baked, ready to be eaten. So it's got a slight bit of color on the top, not too much, but if you compare it to the color kind of inside. I had it in 15 minutes, I think, maybe 18, thereabouts at 150. I stuck a probe in and once it passed 60 degrees C, I thought, well, that'll, that'll be fine. Let's have a go. Mmm, that's yummy. <laughs> Even though that is a sweet pastry, it works really well, <laughs> which is weird because the mushrooms are quite savoury and salty. Mm. That bit of sweetness is quite nice. That's a really nice combination of flavours. So it's the kind of salty, rich, deep flavours from the mushroom mixture. Then the tempeh's got a slightly nutty, little bit sweet kind of flavour on the top of it. And the pastry, because it's nice and crunchy, it just kind of sets everything off. Mmm, that's a great little meal. <laughs> that concept will work really well, applied across different flavours, I think. So you could even do like a quiche, maybe. So if you get some, if you're in the UK, Oggs, scrambled Oggs, or I guess Just Egg in the States, and then you could even do maybe bacon, leek, that kind of thing. I'd maybe bake the egg mixture on its own for a little bit, then put the tempeh on top and then bake the whole lot together. Yeah, because otherwise the tempeh might stop the egg mixture from baking properly. That'd make a really nice breakfast type tart. I might even do that, do a video for that because I've seen some flax seed pastry that I thought might be interesting to try. That's going to be a really nice high protein breakfast if you're into that kind of thing. You could just do the tempeh on its own as well. So you could skip that mushroom mixture and just pack loads of tempeh in. Or you could mix in maybe some fried onions or leeks, red peppers, that kind of thing, tomatoes. Mm. And then just have a solid massive tempeh with pastry on the outside. But I like the different textures there because the tempeh is soft, but it's got a bit of bite to it. And then the mushroom has got crunchy bits from the celery and carrot and then the really soft mushrooms. As I mentioned, you could either use shop-bought pastry or I'll stick a few different links in the description of pastry that I've made. I think it would work really nicely with the seeded pastry I made for the layered tart. I'll stick a card up for that for you and then you can just click on that. Hit subscribe and tap the bell icon for more delicious things you can stuff inside pastry and then head over to this one. <laughs>